All right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini, and I think we're on episode 59. I did not check. Go figure. I never check. <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, all of the fun things that we always ask you guys to do, and I'm going to verify what we are on. We are on episode, yep, 59, which you know what? That's kind of funny because next week will be episode 60, which is the 60th, 60th anniversary Olympia. of Olympia. I did not plan that at all. <laughs> We didn't plan that at all. <laughs> all <right. laughs> hey, it's fitting. Hey, kismet, right? It That's just is it. what it is. So, I yeah, like your shirt. Thanks from this weekend, right? Yeah. yeah they, ho cool. they hooked us up, man. They hooked us up with a bunch of stuff, man. Like, so, okay, I've got, hold on. Okay, so that's what we're doing today, guys, by the way, is we're talking about this past weekend, and then we're talking about the Olympia coming up. So that's our that's our topic for today. Um, but, yeah, they gave us, like, I'm trying to think. There was two. So there was two gym bags that they gave everybody, and then there was a third one that they gave to all the Masters Pro um, athletes, which was nice. It was nice to have something a little bit, a little bit extra for us. Um, they gave us like yoga mats. They gave us water bottles, cookies, um, like booty bands. Like it was like it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> it was amazing. a lot of stuff. I was like, damn, like. And when you look at like what, so Ashley Hampton won it. When you look at what she won, like she got her tiara. She got like three trophies. She got a bowling ball. <laughs> like it was freaking crazy. I'm looking at all the stuff that they put in front of her when she won. And I'm like, how is she? That's like a whole second suitcase of stuff. It was crazy. Is that funny? Crazy. It's like the first thing I thought of too is like, well, how would I get all this back on the plate? I know. I know right? I got lucky at Legion's because the, uh, the trophy is a like a really tall superhero. It's I think it's 34 inches tall. We okay. we were thinking we were gonna have to bring it home. So like we were backstage like trying to figure out like are we gonna have to ship it, whatever. And um the trophies actually weren't ready for the athletes to uh, take home. So they were just kind of like fake trophies. Okay. <laughs> so he's, he said he's gonna mail it. So I okay. got lucky, but hopefully I get it. I, know, right? I didn't have to take it home. <laughs> Oh, I was like, where God. am I going to put this on the plane? Oh, a bowling ball, though? Like A bowling ball. Of all okay. things, a bowling ball. I know, right? It's so that's, crazy. Hey, that's interesting. That's that's unique. I like it. I know. Well, uh, you know, clearly he has a lot of sponsors that step up and all that kind of stuff. So that's what it was. It was all the sponsors that gave, that gave you know, stuff away. And so it was, it was, it was cool. It was nice. Like, it's, you know, like I said, like when you go to a show, you just want to feel like you're you're thought about and appreciated and that's what it felt like you know especially at this show I mean I, you can talk about kind of the travel to get there I know you yeah. drove in and mm -hmm. you know people that fl fly in they still have to take a 45 minute to an hour ride in from the Plus airport traffic. right so it's not the most convenient Correct. to get to so it is nice for them to kind of acknowledge you know thank you for coming thank you for doing yeah the extra long travel to get here. So yep. like how was all that? Cause I know that you and Jennifer drove together and did a little road trip together. How did that all work out for so, you guys? It was actually a lot of fun. Um, so the actual drive itself is just a little over eight hours, right? So, but we planned it so we would just take our time. So we took our time every two hours we stopped and we got out, we ate, we drank our water and went pee and all that kind of stuff. And then halfway mark, we went and stopped at a gym and trained. So, you know, as we got down there, like we left here and we went to the grocery store and all that stuff too. So we probably got on the road around 9 a.m. Um, and then we got into Georgia around 10-ish, somewhere in that area. P.M.? So, yeah. Uh -huh. But at that point, you had already stopped and like trained Correct. and did your We'd stuff. We'd already trained. We'd already done everything. So when we got in, I specifically said that we're going to save our cardio until we get in because um, I want the food to move and stuff once we get to out of the car and all of that. So um and I, I, I mean, I had 15 minutes of cardio. She had 30 minutes and then we just had to finish out our steps and stuff. So it really wasn't a big deal. We were in, you know, back in the hotel room by 10, 30, 11 or something like that, whatever it was. And we went right to bed. So, so yeah, so it was, it was, it was good. Like we had no issues. We didn't hit any traffic, none of those kinds of things. So it was actually, you know, not bad at all, but it, you know, again, probably about a 12 hour travel day, but really, I mean, we got out, we, you know, we ate, you know, again, we, we stopped and like took our time and it was gorgeous, beautiful weather, a straight shot kind of drive, no craziness as far as trying to find the place or anything like that. Good. 
And then when we talked to everybody else that like flew in, they had just as long of travel days as we did. It's just, they didn't have it under their control because again, it was like, you know, it was flights, um, you know, no direct flights, clearly that kind of thing. And then people were going into Atlanta and if you were going into Atlanta, it was a two and a half hour drive with traffic. So like, you know, and there's some people, I think some people flew into Chattanooga too, which again, couple hour drive, you know, so regardless, it is a, it, like you said, a, it's a hike to get there. So it would have taken us just as long if we'd flown. So instead we drove, took our time, saved money, you know, all that kind of stuff too. Um, the drive home, <laughs> drive home still wasn't bad, but we did get stuck in traffic. Um, there was an accident that blocked the entire um, highway. I guess what it was is a, a, a truck carrying cattle hit a guardrail and tipped over. So, oh no. I know. I was like, I don't know. I, I just was looking on the news. So that's how I found out what oh, it was. Oh no. So I, I don't was, know. Exactly. I thought you were also going to say it was people. Well, that doesn't make sense because that was the weekend before people going back into Florida from the hurricane. Yeah, no, it was, it yep. was just, they completely blocked off the entire, like when we, when we got stuck in it, we're like, okay, this had to be something bad because it was dead stop for like miles, you know? That's the so, worst. So they, you know, we ended up re it, GPS rerouted us and everything too. That tells you how long it was. We were sitting there. You know, the GPS actually took us on the on the on the reroute. But um, thank God he kept moving, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we said we're like so. Looking up on the news, they they said that the driver of the tractor trailer was fine. But we're all like, what happened to the cows, though? <laughs> like, are that the was, cows okay? That was my first thought. Where are the cows? Are they good? Are they on the highway? I know. I was like, well, what happened to the cows? <laughs> Don't tell Drew this. Everybody knows he wants a pet cow. So. I know. I know, right? Next thing you know, we're going to be heading that way to try to find the cows on the highway. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, the poor cows, though. <laughs> yeah, literally. So. That sounds, that's terrible. That's awful. <laughs> I know. So it made sense as to why the entire highway was was blocked off. You know what I mean? So totally. We, we still did the same thing on the way back. We stopped and trained. And, you know, I'm really glad that we did that too. Because again, just blood flow in general, you know, um, we've, we had had a cheat meal the night before, you know, getting out after the show as we always do, that kind of thing. So you want to get that blood flow moving and the food moving. And it just felt to kind of get a pump going and all of that. And, and, um, yeah, so we got home late, but we also got on the road late. We got on the road probably around 11. Um, oh, wow. That's late. Yeah. Cause we, for an eight-hour drive. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're good with that. I was just saying, like, yeah. I would be like, let's go. We're on the road. Yeah. Let's stay up. No, we, slept, we slept in, you know, all that. You know, I was like, let's take, you know, again, recovery is important kind of thing. So we slept in, had breakfast, packed up, all that kind of stuff, took showers, all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? And so we were on the road around 11. Um, and then, like I said, we got in probably around 12, somewhere around there. So we got, we get the traffic probably put us behind by about an hour and a half or so, I would say. So not bad. It was, still yeah. wasn't bad. If you're, you're going to be in traffic, it's hopefully no more than a couple hours. Yeah. When all things considered, it really wasn't a bad trip at all. And, you know, when you talk about going through airports and stuff, you're going to end up with those kinds of delays and things like that anyway, half the time. So yeah, I mean, when I came back from Tampa on Thursday night, I was supposed to leave Tampa around 6 and land back in Phoenix around 8.30. My flight was delayed for three hours. So wow. we ended up not leaving Tampa till like 9 p.m. And then I landed here around midnight. So yeah, you had, it's so funny because like we had the we had a travel weekend because of a show. You had a travel weekend because of your hair. <laughs> hair, hair injections. Yes, I am. Uh, I was just saying your lips are full. I was going to say, you. your lips look well. <laughs> I got PEMF -E under my Yeah, yeah. So how do you like that so far? Has it, has it turned out I okay? I like it. I really like it. I was a little nervous, but, you know, like, this is why I go to Tampa is because I trust my injector out there, Nina. She's absolutely, like, incredible. I tell everybody, like, she is an experience. And, like, mm -hmm. you go in and she has, like, a face chart and she's, like, drawing. Because, like, I'm the type of person that, like, I don't, I cannot express to you what I want to look like. I just have a vision of what I want to look yeah. like. So she's really good at like, do you want this? This is how we would do that. So anyway, Nina's fantastic. Shout out to Icon Sierge Med Spa in Tampa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she was like, I, I sat in the chair and she was like, oh wow. Like it's been a while since I've seen you. And she was like, you know, I know you're really close to show, but you look like death like you know, your eye sockets are sunken in. And I was like, okay, well I have to be like, 
stage ready by yeah. next Wednesday, like meaning yeah. tomorrow. Like yeah, I wanted yeah. like no bruising or anything like that. She's like, okay, well we can do this. So she did it. And I mean, I didn't feel any pain, you know, huh. that's where they pull your own blood and then make uh-huh. it into a gel and then put it back. Uh-huh. Um, and I really like the results. Like I definitely Good. look a lot more alive and vibrant and like yeah. this is, isn't even like the final form. Like it's one of those things where like it, it promotes your own collagen. So it will continue to get better and better. But she was like, this is perfect because you're still going to be a little bit swollen, but the okay. swollen is actually giving you the look of what it's going to look oh. like when it's fully formed in like six to eight weeks. I was like, yeah. cool. Perfect. That's, and that's what the sculpture does too. So we've talked right. about sculpture before. It's the same, the same concept. Yeah. She wants me to come back and do that when I'm there for um, hurricane in a couple weeks, just okay. to kind of like finish it. But she didn't want to do that to like too much right before the Olympia. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, we don't want to do anything like that. We're not confident about. So. Yeah. 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 No, totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, so it was, a, it was a good weekend. Um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So this was the first time I've ever done this. Like it was myself competing, but then I had Jennifer competing as a client. And then I also had an NPC client up in um, Connecticut competing too. And they, they all did really well so this was jennifer's best package she's ever put on pay, on stage um same thing with with gabby's uh, best package she's ever put on stage our goal with her was to get her qualified for nationals which we did so and she had big classes i was surprised she said that her master's class was like 14 girls deep or something like that and same thing with open i was like well damn all right and she took second in open and third in masters so I was really, really happy. I mean, she looked fantastic, and um, we're doing another show in four weeks, so um, we'll be able to be able to tweak some some things with her and stuff like that too. Um, Jennifer's doing the Ben Weeder next, so for those who don't know, she is a she is a natural natural athlete. Um, so I really and like, you know, I, I hate to I hate to like put the expectation out there, but also it's one of those things where it's like. If you don't speak it into existence, it, you know you have to speak it into existence. I really think she has a very good, a very good chance at winning that show. I really do. So um, we're doing everything in our power to try and make that happen. I mean, we don't have control over the results at the end of the day, but we have control over the way she looks. So um, we're pushing everything we can to, to try to get to that show. Um, that was a fun experience though, because I was literally on stage yelling at her while she was in comparisons what to do in her poses. I'm on the side diagonal and I'm like, Jennifer, twist, twist. Could she hear you? <laughs> she can't hear me. No. <laughs> well, yeah, was, she told me she couldn't hear me. I don't know if she just Aww. couldn't hear me or if she wasn't paying attention. But this, so this was something funny that happened too. So first call out starts, right? So first of all, there was 30, 30 or 32 girls in open. So anyway, it was a big show. So first call outs happen and the head judge is saying the number of the competitor in their name as he's calling them out. Right. So Jennifer was number 47. So he said number 47, Zoe. And I was like, I'm standing, I'm sitting there. I'm like, be- my eyes are like zoomed in on her. I said, I know they met Zoe. I'm like, but we don't know if they met Zoe, or if they met you, because they said your number. So can go to the line. <laughs> you know what I mean? And worst case scenario, they didn't mean you and you can go back and they'll put you back. But they called 47. That was her competitor button number. So I told Jennifer, I said, in the in the future, if that ever happens, go. Because yeah, own you know, it. The worst, yeah, the worst thing that can happen is they're gonna say, no, we didn't we didn't want you in the first 47 call. So back in line. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But the best scenario is you and they they like what they see and they keep you there. You Correct. know what I mean? So I was like, just go. If you hear your number, because she, she, I could see it in her face. She questioned it and she stood there. And I was like, just go, just go to line. <laughs> right. Like if you're questioning it and don't feel like you belong in the first Yeah, place, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And- you know, that just puts off in our like, oh, yeah, yep, yep, you, you know, you're not supposed to be in this first call out where it's like, it's like no, like they called my no, number. Almost, and, yeah, just like you're saying, go. the worst thing that happened. They yeah. sent you right back to the line. And then she ended up in second call out and in the center. So it's like toward the center. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. So yep. like, you know, I was, I was like, at the end of the day, I was like, just fucking own it. You know what I mean? So so that was, you know, again, every time you get on stage, you learn something. And that was a good learning experience right there. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying she would have stayed in first call out or anything like that, but that could have at least given her a shot at it, you know? Yeah, so, sure. um, so, you know, when we, when it comes down to it, there was a lot of things that, you know, I think everybody, every competitor can say this, but there was a lot of things with the judging that I personally didn't agree with, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
but there was at the end of the day, I was happy for for um, Ashley winning it because I know she's been pushing for a win all year. So I'm really happy with that. So when it comes down to the to the very end of things, as long as the person that wins it is the right person, like that's all that really matters. At the end of the day, everybody else is back to square one. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things, like I said, there's just a lot of things that I, I you know, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? So. But um, for me personally, that's the best conditioning I've ever had in my life. Um, that is the leanest I've ever been on stage by far. Um, but with that, it showed me where my where my issues are, which I already knew. I need more projection on my glutes. You know, I need more more density to my glutes, which is <laughs> story of my life. But it's just you know, it's a it, it was really good to see that I could get to that point with my conditioning and I could get that hard. Um, something I didn't really share with anybody <laughs> at all. And so I put into a post, um, you know, after the show was one of the judges last week at Daytona told me that I couldn't be in shape for, um, for Georgia. So that was something I kind of kept to myself because it pissed me off. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, cause I, I know this and this is something that we have to realize too. I think at the end of the day, we know our physiques, our coaches know our physiques better than the judges do. So when that particular judge said that to me, I was like, you don't know my body. You know what I mean? You don't know why we did this. You don't know why we came in looking the way that we did. I said, I do. I know we came in looking like this because I know when I get lean enough, I don't have the projection. You know what I mean? That's it's it's like which one do you which one do you want? Do you want more oomph to the glutes or do you want to be harder and more conditioned? Right. So um, <clears throat> and that's what Jamie said too. Going into Georgia, she was like, "They they can't tell you you need to be harder <laughs> at this point." You know what I mean? Like, cause, and she's right. They can't. You know, um, my feedback was that I looked better at night than I did in the morning, which I do agree with, um, and that I need more medial glute. I need more projection. Um, and I agree with both of those things. Um, one of the hard parts about being a tall competitor is it takes us all day to fill out. Um, I always look better at night. I've said this, I said this about Daytona. I looked better at night in Daytona. It takes me all day to get full enough and to get hard enough. And the um, show was very early, right? It was. Prejudging yeah. was at 9 a.m. Prejudging yeah. was at 9 a.m. And it was one of those things too that like I did masters over 40 over 35 and open and i got better as i posed because the food started moving more yeah so i could i could physically feel it i could feel my body getting tighter as i went through everything um so that was unfortunate i, I think i think a lot of people were a little off in the morning that was actually i heard over i overheard judging feedback for a few people um and that he said the same thing. He's like, you were a little soft in the morning. You're better at night, blah, blah, blah. And I think that in general happens to anybody who has a little bit more muscle on their frame. You know, we, we're going to get, we're going to get better as we get more food in us. But again, as a taller competitor, that's just how it always is for me. Um, so, you know, it's, it's encouraging, but discouraging at the same time, you know, because I want, I, you always want to come back on stage looking a little bit better every time you do it, but you also want to hit your best when you're at prejudging. So you know, um, so by the time we got, I, you know, I, I, I kind of wish I could do multiple classes like that more often because I felt like I got better every time I got on stage, like as far as how I moved around the stage and things like that. And, um, my posing got better, you know, you just get, get more awareness of where you are, the nerves dissipate, all those kinds of things, you know, um, at finals, like even my husband said this, he's like, they just kept bringing you out on stage over and over and over again. I was like, I know. I was like, mm -hmm. I was in three classes and they rejudged the classes. We did our individuals. They rejudged the classes. They kept us on stage so long. I po I've never been in a show where I've posed that much ever in my life. Like it was a lot, a yeah. lot. Jack takes and, his time. That's for sure. Oh my God. I was like, Jesus. I was yeah. like, okay. Um, so by the end of the finals, I was just doing my other side because I was like, oh, fuck it. I might as well just, just do all of my poses. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter at this point. I might as well get some practice. So um, that was one of the things that I came out of that show with was that I really want to work on my left hand side a lot because my, my waistline is just so much better. My glute pop is so much better on that side. One of the things that um, one of the reasons why I never did my left hand side is because my shoulder is weaker on my left than my right. But at this show, I didn't even pump my upper body at all. I didn't pump my shoulders at all because I got enough muscle that I didn't need to. And I'm watching myself on the live stream back. And I'm like, I'm one of the more muscular competitors up there. Like I'm looking at myself next to everybody. I'm big in comparison. So I was like, I don't, I don't need that. I just need to put the muscle into the right places. You know what I mean? So um, that's, that's something I really want to work on. So, you know, all of this being said, um, I've decided to do one more show this year. Um, but I'm not doing it until December. So, um, I want to give myself the opportunity to push a little bit more food over the next couple of months and just see if I can get a little bit more projection onto the, that medial glute. Um, and I really want to work on my posing conditioning on my left-hand side so I can do my left-hand side. So that's, that's my goal. Um, and then going back, talking about all the things that we just said, the, the show that I'm looking at in December, the prejudging is at two o'clock in the afternoon. It's in California, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I will be able to have food in me and, you know, look my best is what I'm hoping. So that's the goal. The goal is to do one more show and just, just see how that goes. Um, Cause I saw a lot of really good things. And like we've talked about before, you know, every time that you get on stage, <clears throat> you just want to be a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And I just see things that I did better this week, but I still see things that I could do better from there, you know? So um, so my hope is to just kind of try to nail my whole, my whole look in December and then just see where we are at that point. So what's the date of that show? The seventh is whatever that first weekend is in, in December. I don't even know. Um, it's, it's exactly two months. It's exactly eight weeks. So, That's you know, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to stay in shape, not go way off. Yeah, it's a seventh, not go way off. Um, and again, I'm pushing quite a bit of food right now. Jamie up my food a lot. Uh, brought my cardio down a lot. So probably over the next, you know, three, four weeks, just keep pushing that food and then just pull it all right back down. Um, that's, that's my thought process anyway, just see how my body responds to it and see if I can just, again, just bring a little bit more fullness to the glutes in that time frame. I understand that not a lot's going to happen in two months, especially while still being in a caloric deficit. So I get all of that, but uh, you know, we, I can make some shape changes. I can make some posing conditioning changes um, that's the biggest one for me. I think if I can do confidently do my left-hand side, I think it will be a completely different package on stage. So that's my goal. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So there was no that, train hard and heavy and, you know, yeah. I think that you can actually fill the glutes out a little bit more, you know, and bring a little bit more of a bubblier, you know, Agreed. physique. With Agreed. That scene. All right, you guys, we are almost two weeks out from my show. So I have my skin prep ready from liquid sun rays. They've sent me my kit. Um, you have your exfoliating body towel. This is going to make your skin nice and smooth, um, not too rough on the exfoliating. pH balancing body wash, which is super, super important. You wanna make sure that your skin is pH balanced so it's going to absorb your tan perfectly. This is your charcoal sugar scrub, which is the bomb. This is my favorite product that Liquid Sun Rays has right here. And something about this, it just makes that tan really soak in deep. And then last but not least, we have our Liquid Sun Rays Body Lotion, which you're gonna put on every single time you get out of the shower, and that's just gonna put your skin into really good condition when it goes to actually get sprayed for the tan. So we're starting this today and uh, making my skin perfect for that tan as we get into the competition season. Agreed. With that, Agreed. Theme, with that theme conditioning, you know, obviously we know you're not gonna be growing during that time, but you can right. definitely get more plump, you know? Agreed. That's actually that's, something that I've seen with myself, you know, over the past week um, in between pre-judging and finals at Legions, Drew and I had a discussion. We call them discussions, <laughs> unless it's a full-blown fight, but we had a discussion mm -hmm. about him calling me out of my training intensity, um, you know, and I definitely the last two months or so have gotten too comfortable in my training. You know, I, as food got lower and as body fat got lower and as I got busier with work, I did pull back on my training intensity and he kind of gently reminded me in between pre-judging and finals. Yeah. He was like, you know, no, no matter what happens at finals, I want to have this conversation now because if you win, I still need you coming out like a dog on Sunday. And if you lose, you're going to be coming out like a dog on Sunday. So no matter what happens tonight, we're having this conversation now. And I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. I could totally see that. 
Um, so when we got back, I actually ended up hiring a trainer. Um, his name is Nate. Um, he works here in our building, but um, they're actually getting ready to open up an $8 million property um, called The Hive here in Arizona. So it's a huge, beautiful gym. He's going to be one of the head trainers over there. So I'll keep, you know, kind of posting about that as, as things are opening if you guys are, you know, in Arizona. But um, I hired Nate and I gave him the reins. And, you know, yeah. Drew was like, here's the programming and your job is just to, to, to crush her, just to make sure that her training intensity is where it needs to be. And I have not trained this hard in a really long time. So it's felt really good in the way of like, I now see like the huge yeah. gap that I've left on the table and the changes in, in my physique in a week's time with depleting and being on lower calories and this high of training intensity and where my glutes are at right now is, is astronomical, you know? So if yeah. I'm looking at this full and bubbly flat, I can only imagine when we start, you know, eating. So um, a true testament to, you know, continuously checking in with yourself and asking yourself if you're getting comfortable. And I was not doing that. I kind of shifted my focus more toward other things versus my training. And, um, you know, I really do think that the, the training piece, we're in bodybuilding, you know, it has to be at the forefront. It's something that I preach all the time and I didn't do the last couple of months. Um, so, you know, it's funny cause we were, you know, deciding, after Sasquatch, like, do I need to go back into an improvement season? Like, I feel like yeah. I need to grow my glutes even more now, but now where my glutes are at, I don't really think that I'm now that far off, yeah. you know? So it's going to be very interesting to obviously the way that the Olympia turns out. And then we're still up in the air of what's going to happen after the Olympia. If I'm going to be doing a show, if I'm going to be, um, how long I'm going to be off for whatever. So we're going to kind of see how things, you know, continue to shake out. But, um, I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Um, really, really, really excited. I do feel like I'm having a little bit of like hormonal symptoms right now. My mm. fatigue is super high. And then just from this training intensity right now, obviously yeah. I'm very sore, but it's working. So I'm just like, whatever, I'm just going to shut up and keep taking it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, start pulling back on, on intensity going into the show so I could get a little bit of relief. But for right now, we're, you know, well, just taking one day at a time. And that's also the fun part about the training intensity when you are in, in a depleted state, because you can see the changes pretty quickly. Like you can visually see them. Like even myself, I was like, I'm up a couple of pounds from the weekend. Cause again, the, the increased food and, and all of that, I did a glute workout yesterday and I was posing this morning. I was like, damn, my glutes look better today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and again, looking when, because I got as conditioned as I did for Georgia, I could really see where my glutes lack and that was one thing that he said during the the feedback. He was like, you, he's like, you got great tie-ins, you got great upper outer glute. He's like, you just need that medial glute to pop out. And he's right. I mean, that's, that's the part where I lack. And um, so now even when I'm training my glutes, I'm really focusing on making sure that the movement is hitting in that area versus hitting other places. You know what I mean? So like even yesterday, like you said, the intensity thing, I added bands into areas while I was doing my glutes that I haven't added bands to before just to hit that area a little bit better while I'm, while I'm hit while I'm actually training it. So same thing, just increasing the intensity on it, you know, increasing what I'm actually focusing on while I'm doing it, you know? Um, well, and I think it's too, like, it's the story we tell ourselves, which is not necessarily the wrong story, but I think that we get, we get so committed to the story is I'm tired. I'm depleted. I'm not going to be able to lift that yeah. weight. And yeah. that's just the story that we tell ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, I'll say this too, like, I'm always going to train harder if somebody's there pushing me. Like, yeah. I'm human. Like, we're, that is human nature, right? We That's why people go to public gyms. Like, I love a private gym with no one in there, but pe some people can't train in that environment. They need someone training from right. across the room to feel that energy and whatever that means to them. But I'm always going to train harder with somebody standing in my corner pushing me and telling me that I can. Um, you know, the weights that we're choosing right now are definitely higher than what I would choose for myself. He's not there to necessarily correct me on form. Is he doing that? Yeah, absolutely. But he's just there to make sure that I'm hitting that rep Pushing. range. And honestly, if the rep range is 12 to 15, sometimes he's making me go to 20 to 22 reps, you know, and, and I would not do that myself. I would be like, okay, right. cool, cool, put them down. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and that's where we get to in this part of prep is less is more and protect yourself. And all of those things are valid, correct? Yep. Totally valid. But Yep. We, we do it usually a little bit prematurely than we need to. Yes. Our yes. brain is always going to be the one that, you know, cuts out first before our body does. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah. And I just had this conversation with one of my clients this morning because 
she's doing Ben Wiener, but we have to do a, a natural NPC show prior in order to get her qualified for it. You know what I mean? So I was like, if we're doing one next weekend. I was like, this is literally just to get you qualified. So we, I mean, Ben Wiener is five weeks out. We got five more weeks. And she, you know, messaged me this morning thinking, and she's like, I'm just too big, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to be ready. I was like, we have five weeks. I said, next week is not your peak week. Next week is we just got to get you on stage. You're basically just going to run through your poses and that's it. You know what I mean? And not um, coming 100% no, to the warm-up. No, no. And again, I, I noticed her her language and her check-ins is like, I'm fatigued. I'm this, I'm that, I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff. My body's not responding. I said, you're dropping a pound a week. <laughs> I said, your body is absolutely, responding. I said, your body is absolutely responding. I said, you've got five more weeks till our goal show. I said, this is not, you are absolutely on the right path. Like it's a lot of it is what you tell yourself. A lot of it is right here. And I brought up the, cause she did this last month too. I said, I brought up the whole five week out freak out thing. I said, look at your calendar. I said, look at where we are right now. I said, we're five weeks out. I said, same thing that you went through last month. I said, so remember, this is your mind telling you that you're not going to be ready, not your body. I yeah. said, your body, your body's responding. I said, your body's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I said, you look the way you're supposed to look right now. I said, you just need to tell, you need to stop telling yourself you're not responding and then stop telling yourself that you're not doing it right. All this kind of stuff. You need to tell yourself, okay, let's just go fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like there's a yeah, difference. I mean, a part of this sport, I mean, the biggest thing is <clears throat> how how much you embrace the suck, right? right? Like, and human nature is this is uncomfortable. This hurts. Right. This doesn't feel good. I need to fix it. Feel better. Yeah. The sport of bodybuilding, if, if, if it, the, the more it sucks, the more you have to embrace it and understand right. like, this is the hard part. Like you have yeah. to keep pushing there. I have a girl that's also prepping for Brent Ben Weeder and like the cardio is just not where it needs to be. And her feedback yeah. is, well, I'm tired. And like, you're going to be tired. That's this right. Is the that's part, part of the sport that 10% of, of our population only does a sport because they can't push when mm -hmm. times get tough. Like when your legs feel like cinder blocks, can you continue to show up for yourself and give 10 out of 10 of whatever you have that day versus going, oh, I don't really feel the best that day. I'm just going to knock this down about five, about five miles per hour. No, like the people that are champions that are making those improvements are the ones that are continuously pushing themselves and showing up and embracing that suck. And listen, there's some cardio sessions where I feel that way and I'm literally watching the minutes tick uh -huh. down on my 40 minutes of cardio. I'm like, no, oh, it's been five. Oh, nope, it's been 30 seconds. Like yep. those are the days that you just have to really work on that mental. Like mental is so, so big in this sport. 100%. And the ones that I have taught to, you know, clients wise, really push that intensity in cardio through their training in, in their preps. They're the ones that aren't on high amounts of cardio and can keep their food as high as possible because their energy output is so high. Yeah. And I had a friend of mine ask me yesterday, she's like, so how are you doing after the two back to back shows and blah, blah, blah. I said, actually, I'm fine. I was like, I, I'm good. Like, she's like, oh, I thought you'd say you were exhausted. I'm like, no, I'm like, when I look, when I look at it, I'm like, my calories barely got under 1500 calories a day. Barely. It was like 1480 yeah. or something like that. I was like, yeah, my cardio got up to 70 minutes, but even that's not bad. It's like, when you look at it, like some people are, you know, 90, 110, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm like, I have the 70. I said, it was hard for a couple of weeks, but then it's fine. I said, now I'm back down again. I said, and my body's just continuing to respond. I mean, you know, it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, what, when you, when you're out of it, you realize how, how it really wasn't that bad. You know, it's just like when you're in it, you feel like this is terrible. Like it's really, but it's really not. Yeah. It's, it's really always, not. it's always perspective, you know, yeah. where you're at. and we've talked about that. Like, you know, when you're in improvement season, you're wishing that you're here. And then when we're in prep, we're hoping for more food and improvement season. And it's, that's really where like people get so caught up in where they're at right now, instead of just really focusing on today, and, like enjoying yeah. the journey. And that's right. what I keep telling myself. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday of Olympia week. Am I feeling the best the last couple of days? No, I'm really not. I'm have a lot of brain fog. I have a lot of fatigue, but you know what? I'm prepping for the Olympia. There's right. not a lot of people that can get here and right. enjoying every single day. You know, like today I didn't wait. I woke up. I didn't really feel my best, but I'm going to make today great because it's all here. Like if I tell myself that it's going to be a terrible day, it's going to end up being a terrible day, you know? So it's, and that's, that's taken me time. And listen, there's some days where I wake up and I embrace, I embrace the suck in a negative way. Like I that's just right. tell myself, 
and that, you know, I'm human, that's the way it is. But that's what I told myself this morning, like what a privilege it is for me to feel like this and to be able to push this hard. My body has only gotten better, you know, through this prep, you know, usually I, I get better show to show, but then I start kind of, you know, dwindling down. Like I just, I just keep improving at this point. So, um, I'm just really grateful and, you know, excited and, you know, yeah. that's, you know, that, that flipping of that mindset from this morning. So yeah. you are in control of that and, and that's a great place to be behaviors will be too. Yeah. And that's a great place to be in. And it's like, you know, it's, you start to realize it's like, okay, I'm really, I really am blessed to be here kind of thing, you know? And I've seen that happen with some of my clients too, like Gabby that competed this past weekend, you know, she had a lot of stress going into the show and, and, um, and then she checked in with me this morning and her check. And I actually got a little teary out while I was reading it. I'm going to, as I'm like talking about it, but her, her daughter was just like texting her and telling her how proud she was of her and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, when I, when I think about it that way, she's like, this was a huge win, you know? And it's just like, it's a, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a privilege, yeah. you know, it's amazing how much we're able to actually do. We're, all, we're both like, <laughs> again, no, no, because it's so cool. It's so cool. Like when we see clients come in and you know, they're checking in with us and their kids are there and they're like, you know, I want to be a bikini competitor I or be like, you know, you. Yeah. Little, um, a future FBF athlete sure like, yeah. it is, you know, you're setting such a great example for them. Something really cool that I saw on a reel too is, you know, and, and I do see this a lot is that when mom, start this journey, they're afraid of how their kids are going to perceive them when they're right. like using a food scale or they're dieting. Yep. And um, the real was that her child came up and was like, mom, why are you weighing your food? And the way she spun it was mommy has to make sure that she gets in all of her protein. So she's big yeah. and strong and that she's yeah. eating enough food to be bit. And I was like, wow, like what a cool perspective to share with your child of like why that scale is on the counter versus yeah. mommy's dieting and mommy's trying to cut weight and mommy, you yeah. know, mommy's trying to get like 0% body fat, you know, like just yeah. that, that shifting a perspective. So for all the parents out there, because I know I deal with this one a lot is like, what am I going to tell my kids when they're asking why I'm dieting or why I'm losing so much weight? Like shift that perspective because still when you're that lean, you're probably eating more than the average person. Well, in protein I, I was going to say that. that. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say that. Like, it's amazing to me since I've been coaching, watching how many people don't eat like I, I it's just amazing to me when I, and I that puts it into into perspective for me a lot too because like I was saying like even at my lowest cut this this time around it was like 1480 or something was my lowest on my on my calories and I have women that come to me that are barely like that are under a thousand calories a day and I'm yeah. like you, I'm like, you, you and do then binge on the weekends. Yeah. I'm like, you do yeah. realize that you're killing yourself that way. Like, like that's not how you were meant to function. Yeah. You know, when I am at my leanest and my smallest, I'm eating like two times the amount of food you're eating. Correct. Like that's, that's nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like it's crazy when you start looking at it with that kind of perspective and how warped like the diet industry actually is in comparison to what you should be doing in order to be healthy. You yeah, because you'll tell someone, well, yeah, you should be averaging at about 1,800 to 2,000 calories yeah. a day. They're like, whoa, that's a lot. That's way like, too okay, much. well, if you actually put together like the amount of calories that you eat Monday through Friday, and then the amount of calories that you eat on Saturday and Sunday with going out to eat, and then your yep. alcoholic beverages, honestly, if you averaged all that out, you're probably eating about 3,500 calories yeah. per day. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, uh, like, never really thought about it that mind way. Mind blown. Yeah. You know what I mean? But people just, that's the thing is they severely underestimate the amount of damage that they can do on the weekends. And it is true. One meal or one night out, it's not going to blow your progress, but if you're doing it every weekend, Saturday mm -hmm. and Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, whatever, those things add up. Those yep. things add up at the end of the month. You know what I mean? Yep. And something simple, like when we were driving back from Georgia, every time we stopped at a, at a 7-Eleven, I looked to see if they had a, a sugar-free Slurpee because I really wanted a sugar-free Slurpee and nobody has them, right? So we finally get to the last one that we stop at and it says zero sugar. And I was like, that says zero sugar though. That doesn't say sugar-free. I was like, hang on. So I Googled it to see what the nutritional information was on it. It was no sugar added. So... Yeah. It was still 170 calories for a small Slurpee and at 40 grams of sugar. And I was like, okay, never mind. Got to be careful. Yeah. Be careful. This thing is a good thing you you looked at that. I mean, that <laughs> stinks too because some of the 7-Elevens have that new, um, what is it, the Coke 
no, it's the um, the Oreo, the Oreo Coke Slurpee. Oh, zero, I've heard. Zero I sugar. haven't tried that, but I yeah. Don't know if Wawa has it or 7-Eleven oh. has it. One of them have it out now. Well, this so, one's not. It was a dragon fruit. It sounded really good, and I was oh. like, oh, I was like, that sounds really good. Let me Google it real quick because I, I I know how to read through the through the marketing hype. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, gotcha. You know, Slurpee Posho is like. Yes, like a little carbonation. It's nice and cold. <laughs> but it was like, you know, the, the hard part about being in Georgia too is deep south. So it's like everything sugar and fat and fried and everything. And I was just like, all right, like what you guys eat post show? So we went to this cute little restaurant. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a like a American fair kind of stuff, you know. But what do we get? So we got for appetizers, we got fried um fried avocado. Mm. So that was actually really good. I've never had that before, but it's like you take, they just took avocados, like they, they cut them in little strips and Slice. then fried them. Yeah. Really it's good. It's like little uh, fries. Yeah. 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 yeah avocado Cute. fries basically. Cute. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, I got a salad, a spinach salad with thick cut, ba thick cut bacon on it. Oh my God. That was the best. That was the best thing that we had the whole, like of the whole thing. It was, it was like this chunky bacon on, on the salad. It was so good. Mm. Um, and then I had a burger just a regular burger, no cheese, just a regular burger. And I said it was, it was nice because it was like, it wasn't like a fancy burger. It was like almost like something I would grill on my own grill, you know, which was yeah. beautiful. It was perfect. It was just a simple brioche bun. Like it wasn't over the top, you know? Um, and that just had, had potatoes with it. And then we got our <laughs> big, it was milk and cookies, like cookies and cream, whatever it was for dessert. But it was this big, huge, like warm chocolate chip cookie with ice, with ice cream and like just like chocolate and, and caramel yeah. sauce all over it. So Jennifer, Jennifer and I split that and we ate the whole fucking thing. <laughs> I did the whole thing by myself. It so. so good. Oh my God. It was so rich. Like the cookie itself was no, no lie. It was this big around and probably wow. this thick. It was Yum. huge. It was yeah. huge and it was so worth it. Um, and then we had, you know, we had wine and stuff like that too. And then we go back to the hotel. So the cool thing, we got the, we were at the home two suites, which was beautiful. It had a, it had a um, kitchen and everything. I love the, the home two suites. Fantastic. I love home two suites. Um, yes. And then they had a fire pit outside. So like I beautiful. Went smoked my cigars outside. Um, the, the, the last night Jennifer smoked with me. Um, and then when we were out there, uh, she's like, I'm going to go inside real quick. So she goes inside. She's in there for like ever. I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> so she went to the, to the front desk and asked them if they had any wine that she could buy at the front desk. And the guy was like, no, he's like, well, we had an event here earlier and they left wine. Do you want some? So they gave her wine. I didn't drink any. I was done. That was that so sweet. Yeah. That but he gave cool. her, he gave her wine. So yeah, he was like, it was, was so funny wine? too. <laughs> I, I don't think so. It was like, it was, it was a Pinot Grigio, but that was the funny part about it. She said that when she asked about it, he's like, yeah, it's like Pinot Gridge something. <laughs> She's like, like so he's not a wine connoisseur. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> Pinot. <laughs> It's like Grigio. <laughs> so it's white wine. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so she and... got herself some wine. <laughs> so so yeah, so we did that and um just kind of chilled until we went to bed and it was it was perfect, you know, it was That's a great awesome. night. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it was a lot everybody of fun. keeps asking me, they're like, What do you want after the Olympia? I'm like, I want a dirty martini. Yeah. And I a couple She had one of those. <laughs> she had a dirty martini at dinner. That is um, like that's yeah. not I am yeah. that is me. Yeah, dirty martini I, with blue cheese olives and truffle fries anywhere and I'm solid. Oh, that's Anything so else funny. Yeah. I was like, all I really wanted was a salad and I wanted a burger. I really wanted a burger. I love salad too. Yeah. I love yeah. Salad I was too. like, I don't, most of the time post show, I want like a steak or something like that. I really wanted a burger. I don't know why, but I really want I a burger. love this burger from this place in Paris, the hotel that, or the uh, yeah, restaurant yeah. at the bottom is called yeah, uh, yeah. Alex or something like that. Drew, I forget what happened. We were in Vegas and he, I went and had dinner there by myself at the bar. It was awesome. It was the best burger I've ever had. Yeah. Best truffle fries I've ever had. Um, so hopefully we can get over there. I'm oh, nice. I might be able to sneak over there Sunday after I'm done with JM shoot before oh, we yeah. go to the, to the, um, hotel or the airport before we fly out. We fly out super late on Sunday, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. That's, I was gonna ask if you I'm going to have a burger, staying. that's the one I'm craving. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember where it was that I had. Oh, that's what it was. So we have this place here in Virginia and there's a couple of them. It's called Founding Farmers. Okay. Um, 
restaurant and what they do is they all of their food everything that they that they make is all locally sourced from farms right so it's all super fresh they actually make their own sodas in house they make their own sodas in house they if you if you want a good burger founding farmers i'm telling really? you it will it will melt in your mouth that mm. best burger best burger you will have ever in your life so, so yeah i love these restaurants we were talking about this on sunday actually over dinner like with these concepts of like locally sourced yes. of where you're living um there's this one restaurant greg was telling us about and they're like all on the west coast but they only take in ingredients from whatever's local so yep. like you could go to a restaurant yep. here in arizona and get a burger but it's Tastes not the same. Totally different yeah. than the one in Texas because their cattle yep. and everything's different over there. But I love that they're kind of incorporating the you know restaurant market to local farmers. And, yeah, you know, it's it's really cool for the economy and and using yeah. locally sources too. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that it's so good too. It's like you you start to realize. I've said this before. I grew up on a small farm. We raised our own chickens, goats, pigs, all that stuff, turkeys, everything. And um, all, all grain fed, no steroids, no hormones, no none of that stuff injected. And it was one of probably the best things my parents could have done for us as kids. Didn't know at the time, but, you know, even our eggs, our eggs came from our chickens in the backyard. You know what I mean? So it's like it was one of those things where, again, they didn't even realize what they were doing for us as far as health was concerned. But it's and it's just so much better. It's just so much better for you. Yeah. I mean, crazy. The hormones that they were putting in everything when we were like, you know, high school yeah. compared to now. Oh my yeah. gosh. Like, yeah. yeah it's crazy. Well, that's what people say. Like when they go to Europe or they go to Asia or something like that, like the food is so much better just because they don't have all that crap in there. I know. You know I'm very interested because I'm going to be in Europe in, you know, a few yeah, weeks. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, the difference in quality and like some people are like, I just want like a plain piece of protein and like you can't find that at any of your meals so it's gonna be very interesting you know to see the like the, the cultural differences and whatnot yeah. the, how it's different the textures i'm yep i'm, I'm low-key nervous but also excited yeah. to kind of experience well that. yeah i mean that was because I, I realized that in, in japan like i could eat anything and i had no stomach discomfort you know when i the whole time i was there um you know i work with prosis the company and they're based out of portugal in order for them to get their supplements on the market they have to go through a bunch of testing that we don't have to do here in the states here in the states you can put whatever the hell you want to in your supplements and you're you're on the market you know they don't Correct. do that over there they're not regulated know? by the fda yeah. right right they don't do that over there they have to go through a ton of testing so like i've found even with their foods and stuff that i get from them i have no issues no no gastrointestinal issues at all from any of that's that a, stuff that's a really good, really good point that's a really yeah. good point because a lot of the time people get digestional issues with like mm -hmm. you know whey proteins or certain yep. protein bars and things like that and i'm in conversation right now with a few a few supplement companies and one of them they do their own third-party marketing with mm -hmm. multiple sources mm -hmm. and i'm sorry testing testing and mm -hmm. um they they have really good um digestion <laughs> feedback from their clients from their yeah. athletes you know and the, the one that i'm working with right now is the same like that's why i've committed to them for so long right. because not nine out of 10 people do not get any kind of flare ups from protein powders or EAA powder because the products are so clean, but because yep. they're not regulated here in the States, they could say there's whey protein in it, but they don't tell you how much the rest of it could be flour and fillers <laughs> yeah. and all that junk. Yeah. 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 So like absolutely standard whey protein that, yeah. you know, it's super, super cheap at GNC that everybody goes and picks up. Yeah. And you're having digestional issues. Yeah. Well, it's cheap for a reason, right? That's quality. right protein costs money. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, and that's with everything. I mean, you know, going back to way back when, you know, the, what was it? Red con or whatever, when they all got busted for what they put into their, their supplements when they were doing all that stuff and everything. It's like, cause they don't have regulations. Yeah. That, and a lot that, of people don't know that. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. Scary. It is. It really is. You know, and I, and I see this all the time with my clients. Like I was mentioning this to one of my girls this past week because she's, she's hitting her macros really, really well, but she's doing a lot of uh, protein supplements and things like mm -hmm. that. Right. And I was like, she's having issues with constipation and bloating and all this stuff. I was like, cause you're eating all this this junk. I was like, I'm really happy you're hitting your macros. I said, but the reason why you're having a hard time with digestion is because you're not eating whole foods. You're eating these supplements. I see that these are fine sparingly. I said, but they shouldn't be what your, what your food, your meals are based on. I said, no convenience wise, it's very easy. I said, but this is why you're having a hard time with, with your stomach right now. 
Yeah. So. You know, there's a difference of hitting your macros and then how the food is processed internally. Okay. And I think that the, the gap of that understanding is, is not there, you know, yep. especially new people, you know, they're just so focused on hitting the macros, which is great. Don't get us wrong. But if you're not functioning properly, right. then food needs to be taken, you know, into consideration. There have been so many athletes on my roster this past month that, you know, they're on some sort of cut or they're trying to cut or they're gaining weight when they're not supposed to be. And all I have done, I've kept their macros the same and I've changed their food, their food sources and put Versus. them on a meal plan. And I've said, Hey, follow this meal plan for a week. And if I'm crazy and if we're wrong, then we can go back to the eating habits. And every single one of them came back down weight. Yep. So same macros, just different food sources and yeah. whole food, ones that are going to keep them even more full, you know, instead of a protein yep. powder, actually eating animal protein so now you're more full you're satiated you're giving your body something to digest on versus add having added fillers something that's really not going to keep you full you know it's hard and everything in moderation right i don't care if you have mm -hmm. a couple of protein yeah shakes same. and and one you know protein bar or whatever but it can't be all of your meals all of it you know correct everything in moderation <laughs> absolutely so i'm the same way i'm the same way actually one of my girls just checked in while we were sitting here and uh she's one of the ones that's guilty of, of protein shakes every meal and i was like mm -hmm. I was like, you could have a protein shake, one, <laughs> not five. <laughs> right. And I think, you, you know, do that to the garden. it's like we just talked about. It's easier. Ago. It feels like so much food for them. So they're trying to decrease the food volume. So sometimes yeah. it takes a few weeks for them to get used to that. But you have to start slowly introducing more food in for your body to get used to more food. That's right. That's <laughs> right. It's, That's it's, right. It's, it's like, yeah, I'm really proud of you. You are hitting your macros. But this but, still is not the best decisions. <laughs> which break comes back to like what we did going into this sh this last show in Georgia. I I liquid carved up, right? That's so, right. How'd that go? Yeah, actually, really well. Except I just didn't get full enough. Again, just because of being nine a.m. So I think there's a balance there again um, with food and with liquid. I was actually really happy with how full I got on the on the carb up with the, the liquid carb up. But the difference between pre judging and finals is between Prejudging in finals, I had a rice bowl, like one of those sticky, sticky rice bowls from Costco I talked about. And then I had, what was it, four ounces of chicken and I had like two tablespoons of, of almond butter. That was all I had in between the two meals and salt and water. And I filled out a lot more just from that one meal. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a balance. But again, going into prejudging at 9 a.m., I got to be careful about my waistline. So it's like how, how you push food in the morning because I really I was really flat when I woke up, like really, really flat when I woke up. And we had already pushed food the day before. So it wasn't like it's just like your body gets to this point where it just burns through everything. You know, so um, I went to bed pretty full, but I woke up super flat in the morning, like super flat in the morning. Yeah. And Jamie was like, we just got to really pump you. I said, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So it was like, and that was the thing too. So when I got on stage the first time when they did first looks, my legs were shaking so bad and it was because I pumped so much backstage. I realized I was like, I'm not nervous. Why are my legs shaking so much? I was like, it's because I was pumping for so, so hard, so long backstage trying to get that to food to flow through. You to, know? to stick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> I mean, and it did yeah. to an extent it did to an extent as much as it was going to but again it's just finding that good balance you know were so, you hungry on friday when you were carving up um not really but i haven't i haven't really been hungry i was i was hungry er i will say i was hungry er on on friday and saturday because we'd started boosting the food up on thursday so like by friday i was ready to eat so it wasn't like I wasn't starving or anything like that, but I was like, okay, I need food. You know, like I, I felt that, you know, and I yeah. don't, I don't all, really all prep. I haven't felt that way. I haven't felt like I needed food. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's just, like, I it's, asked because like Thursday going into legions, we started yeah. eating and I yeah. was starving when I showed up yeah. in Jamie's room at the last, you know, before the last meal of the night. She's like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, I'm really hungry. She's like, okay. Yeah. So she gave me like a little bit more food. I had a good amount of macros left, but she gave me a little bit more food. And then I ended up dropping the next morning. And when mm -hmm. I checked in, was like, wow, I'm really glad that you told me last night that you were that hungry because if I didn't feed you the little bit more that I did, you know, who knows where we would be at. So it's like, yeah. when you start feeding that way, you, it, I, and I didn't realize that, you know, like mm -hmm. say, mentioning to her how hungry I was, was a sign that my metabolism was starting to really pick up and like, yeah. maybe we need to eat a little bit more to kind of offset what's going to happen in the morning. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just a friendly reminder of like 
all data matters. So like yeah. if you feel something, say it to your coach when you're checking in, like, Hey, I'm hungry. Hey, I'm super full. I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom too. Whatever you think is changing or that you're feeling all data matters. Yes. So even if we don't put, do anything with it at that time, it's still something that I'm going to, you know, mention and take a note of. Yeah. Um, so that's why I asked if you were hungry, you know, if yeah, you I mean, kind of hungry, and I would say, felt, like I said, I, it was like, I, I felt hungry for, but I wasn't like, I was like, I need food. I wasn't like that. You yeah. know, it was like, I felt like, okay, it's, it's time to eat. Like I need to eat. I yeah. felt my energy dip, you know, those kinds of things. Like I felt the spikes so again, we're increasing carbs. So I could feel the difference in my blood sugar. You know, yeah. I could feel yeah. that, that more. So that was more so what I felt than it was even the hunger. I could feel the, the change in my, in my blood sugar drop and all that kind of stuff. How about for you, baby food? I haven't tried it. It's something I could try. See, that's something too, like the fact that I'm going to stay relatively tight these next two months. I want to try a few of these things and see how they work and see how they affect me. Um, you know, one thing we had planned for, because I had such an issue in Daytona with going to the bathroom, one of the things we had planned for is using like a suppository or something if I needed to. But unbeknownst to me, <laughs> I started drinking this green drink. Right. And I just, right. drink, yeah. I was just drinking that. it. Yeah. I was just drinking it because I was getting rid of the volume from the spinach. So I was just doing green drink to replace that. Well, when I looked at the label on Friday, because I went to the bathroom four times on Friday and I was like, this is not like me at all. Like, especially after a long car drive, this is not like me at all. So when I looked at the label, it said detox and digest. I was like, oh, <laughs> It's like, that's makes sense. why it was the green drink. I was like, because I realized when I went to the bathroom that my number two looked a little bit green. And I was like. Oh, so is that great. something that you are safely going to keep in? I'm not like, going to keep good? it regularly. I'm, okay. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep it like once, once a day. I was doing it twice, twice a day. Okay. Cause that's when I would have my spinach. I would typically have spinach twice a day. So Got I'm it. doing it twice a day. So at this point right now, I still have it in once a day. And so I'm going to continue with that. And as long as I I'm, I'm feel okay, I'm just going to continue with that. So I did, I'm doing that right now. Um, but yeah, so I, I had no issues with that at all, which was funny because we were laughing about it the whole weekend because I'm usually the one that can't go to the bathroom. And then Jennifer's the one that goes nonstop and it was completely flipped. She couldn't go. So I had her do the suppository and she was like, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> She was like, oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> I feel like the suppositories need to be like on the packing checklist at this point. Like, yes. I didn't, and again, I didn't have to use it. At some point, I'm sure these next two months, I'm going to get backed up so I can try it and see how my body responds to it. But literally, I had her do it. I had her lay in the bed. This was, this was right before athlete check-ins, right? So she was a little bit late to athlete check-ins for this reason. I have but no I was clue like, what's about to come out of your mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I had her, I lay, had her lay on the bed. No, I just had her lay there for because you're supposed to keep it in for 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, right? I thought you were gonna, you were gonna, you like helped her or something. No, <laughs> no. But I did have her do the colon massage. I had her do the colon massage while she was laying in bed, and she's like, "Can I go yet?" She's like, "I can feel things moving." I said, "Give it another couple minutes. Just another couple minutes. You've only had it in for about 15 minutes. Just give it a couple more minutes." I'm watching my watch, and I was like, "Okay, you can go now." <laughs> It worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it totally worked. Put the link below of the one that you like. Um, well, the, it was just a drugstore one. It was Doug Lax or whatever. Okay, so just, nothing. Okay. Nothing crazy. You just literally okay. can go to CVS and pick it up. It's not a big deal. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, Perfect. Um, but I'll drop it. I'll drop it in the, in the description box. But, uh, but yeah, so it worked great for her. And like I said, I didn't have to use it. So, um, so yeah, we were good with that. Like, it's, it's so funny how that can make such a huge difference though. Like I felt so much better on stage this past weekend, just because I didn't have a bunch of crap stuck in me, literally, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, I, it's happened to me once and I get it now. Like, yeah. I get it. I was in a shit mood, no pun intended. Yeah. And it just makes you feel yucky. Like, mm -hmm. It does not make you feel like you want to get up on stage in a two-piece bikini and expose yourself. So I get yep. it. And Jennifer like, was saying that until she could go. She was saying that the whole time. She's like, oh, my God. Like, this is – I just don't feel good. Like, What it's part like, of you wants to go jump on stage with a belly full of poop? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Yeah. Nobody. So, so, again, it was like – it was one of those things. It was like – Knowing her and knowing how regular she typically is, I was like, we got to do something and we got to do something now. I was like, so let's just 
go for it and see what happens. Sure enough. Yeah. Well, good thing you were there in person too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a blessing. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So that was fun. I'm glad that I got to do all that in person. So we've got some things we're going to be working on for Weeder, but, um, but in general it was, I was very, very happy overall with everything from that, from her look. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, let's just kind of wrap up going into Olympia week. You're leaving tomorrow. I leave tomorrow morning. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and then unfortunately there is a hurricane hitting directly to my home in Florida and my business tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a little stressful. stressful. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously nothing we can do. Uh, the house and the business is boarded up and everybody is evacuating. So it's uh, pretty scary. It's going to be, it's going to be devastating. Um, Mm. Clearwater beach at this point with the storm two weeks ago. And now this, I mean, there's so many of our friends that have lost everything. And then, Uh you know, Clearwater beach, they literally just cleared all the sand from the streets. There was nowhere to put the sand. So it's just sitting on the side of the road and now the storm's coming. So, um, play, pray for Florida, you know, Uh if anybody is listening, like Florida is about, you know, two, two of these big storms in a row. And we've never seen a storm like this. I mean, it's literally coming like out and then straight in. So, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm heartbroken because I feel almost guilty, you know, so uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my family and friends are, you know, literally That's trying to get name. out. Um, we had two Olympians on our team that live in Florida. They had to fly out yesterday, you know, so it's, 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 there's a lot going on with that. But, um, other than that, it's going to be fantastic. So yeah, we get in on Wednesday, tomorrow, and then Thursday is really long day with meet the Olympians and athlete check-ins. Um, so it's like basically just like a whole media day. Um, and then Friday is just, you know, to focus on, uh-huh. you know, getting ready for the show. So I'm excited just to get there and, yeah. you know, start getting kind of into that, to that energy and, and it's that mindset, you know, the, yeah. um, everybody's starting to get there and resorts world looks like all decked out. They have mm-hmm. like the here and there. So once I get there and kind of immersed in that, then I'm going to be able to like really laser focus, but I'm starting to feel excited and the hype and, you know, all the yeah. predictions are starting to come out and everybody's, you know, everybody's on, you know, the Olympia high. So it's been, yep. it's been really fun. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to do my predictions live tonight. So that's, that's part of that. Um, I haven't done it yet. Um, we got some news over the weekend that there may be another person dropping out of the Olympia hasn't happened yet. So I don't think they're going to. Um, so if they were to, that would be a big change, big, big change. Um, but again, we haven't seen them actually do it yet. So I'm assuming they're in, I'm assuming, so we'll see, we'll see, but that does actually knowing what I know now that does kind of affect what I'm thinking as far as predictions are concerned. So I'll talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm getting it on Thursday morning myself. Um, I actually decided to stay down the road because I have so many points built up. I was like, well, I'm going to not spend fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 on a hotel room. <laughs> I'm going to go down the road and get one for free. <laughs> so Perfect. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm staying right down the street, a half mile away um, at the Marriott down the street. And I'm kind of happy about that because I was saying, I was like, this, this weekend is really going to be an opportunity for me to just kind of chill. So my plan is I'm going to go to the prejudgings and do commentary and all of that for, you know, wellness and bikini. Um, I'm going to go train at the gyms there in Vegas. I want to go to like fit club and stuff like that and train. Um, I want to get some, some rest and relaxation. I mean, I am still like in prep and I, and I don't want to blow it this week, you know? Um, and then I want to go to the watch party on Saturday night, the one that's in the club. I think that'll be so much fun. I think that'll that'll be so much fun. I want to go too, but I have to be with JM at 10 AM, but I might still Uh, pop over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, unless you're in the top 10, unless you're in the top 10, right? I know, right. (laughs) (laughs) But like my problem. The, the best, I know, right? The, the best Olympia experience I ever had for finals for Saturday night was at the Orleans. This was years ago. And we were all at the, the center bar, the alligator bar, and we all got the live streams on our phones and we're all partying around our phones with the drinks Watching and it. stuff like that. It was so much fun. And it wasn't, it was like my friends, but then all the people at the bar too, like it we're was doing just it too. so much fun. And I, I have friends like, that are supposed 
flying in from Florida and they did not get tickets for the night show and they're yeah. just going to go find a bar and hang out yes. together and then I'll see them at, you know, and we have tickets for the night show, you know, my friend, my yeah. family, but you know, it's, it's so cool. And I honestly, I would prefer that because Same. you, you can see things right better. There. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, like any night finals, like unless you got the VIP tickets the day after the Olympia when they're really yeah. like you're in the way back, you know, yeah. you're not really seeing much. You'll see a lot more on your phone. So I tell people that every all the time, time that I've gone to Vegas, be in the energy, don't even, you know, waste your money on the, on the, you know, night show tickets. Just go watch on the live yeah. stream. Every time that I've gone and I've actually been there for finals, I end up walk, watching on the big screen in front of me. Me anyway. too. Me too. <laughs> like I'm not watching the stage. I know. So it's like, because bodybuilding is such a nuanced sport. Unless you're like sitting in the judges' seats, you don't see what you want to see. Yeah, when Derek Lunsford looks this big, on yeah. stage, and I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'd rather be in a in an environment like you said where it's fun and we can like chill and like scream and yell at the, at the screen and, and stuff like see. that. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. So, it's like so that's my plan. Game. Yeah, I still and I'm still and I've still got to reach out to your girl about body work too. I'm actually going to get body work done today. Um, that's something since the last show that I'm going to really start focusing on is body work with massages, dry needling. And then I'm also going back to cool contours and doing cool toning on my glutes too. So. I can get that done with me. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I contacted her the other day, so I'm going back starting again next week. Um, so Good. again, just doing everything I can do to try to get that 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 pop. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I do. I want to contact your girl and see if I can get in a time in a time frame with her while I'm there in Vegas as well, and just get some work done. So, She's incredible. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So again, going back to, I'm just going to use this time to to do my business and my my work stuff and do the do the live streams like I always do but also just focus on myself and just relax a little bit. Yeah. And what a great place to be your first week of your reverse diet, right? Like mm -hmm. you know, in an environment where other people are still dieting and, you know, going after their goal. And it's a really good spot to kind of Absolutely. put you mentally when you, because the first two, two to three weeks when you're kind of in that wool phase is the hardest. It's like, Oh, yep. well, I'm ready for a show, but I still have so much far to go. Like when you're yep. at the Olympia, like you're, still surrounded in that atmosphere. So it's actually really good. But I, I love that, that you kind of have like that blend of like, I'm going to go train, take care of myself, but, you know, also be at the show and, you know, work and, you know, do that thing. Like that's to me, like a great vacation. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Like I don't need to go out and party and drink and eat and all that kind of stuff. I don't need to do any of that stuff. I want to sleep You're with your friends all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, I want to sleep. I want to yeah. go like, I, I'm like, I go to the pool. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just chill for a little Think bit. Think you haven't done in a bit. <laughs> yeah, stuff I haven't had a chance to do. I'm like, listen, I was like, I was talking to a friend of mine and, and uh, about going and staying off site. I'm like, I'm actually kind of excited about staying off site because I can go be by myself. <laughs> I, and not, I feel that. <laughs> it's like not deal Anywhere with Anywhere that we go, you know, like we have to yeah. give ourselves another 15 minutes when we're walking yes. somewhere. We're going to run into someone. And that's yes. cool. Like, I love it. Don't get Agreed. me wrong. But, you know, there are those moments where you're like, you really need to get somewhere. Like, you really need to, you know, just have a moment. So mm -hmm. I totally feel that. Totally yep. feel that. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited about the whole situation. So that it's going to be, it's going to be good. And then, well, you know, again, soon. I know, I know. I'm hopefully, hopefully crossing my fingers, no problems with, with flights and travel and all that kind of stuff. So again, I'm out on the first flight, I do it on purpose. I'm out on the first flight on Thursday and then I'm out on the last flight on Sunday. So Me too. <laughs> I'm like, Fun. Is what you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I actually don't get home until Monday morning. Cause again, going from East coast to West coast. Yeah. So I gain time getting out there, but then I lose time coming back. So I get in at like eight something in the morning on, on Monday morning. Yeah. Go right to bed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll sleep on the plane and like, you know, Mondays really are my heavy check-in days for clients. So it's more just me making sure that they're all set to go and all that kind of stuff. And then I've got one girl in peak week that week and then the rest of them are all just normal check-ins. So yeah. Yeah. She'll be fine. Perfect. So, perfect. Um, but yeah, that it should be a fun, it should be a fun weekend coming up. Uh, I got a lot of shit ton to do, shit ton to do before I leave Thursday. I'm sure you got a shit ton to do before you leave tomorrow. So then I have to be with my trainer in 15 minutes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. No, as soon as I, as soon as we hang up here, I'm getting this downloaded and I'm leaving to go get body work done. So I'm there the same go. boat you are. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You enjoy going, going, getting your ass kicked. I, I get my, like. Body work, I get my ass kicked too, just in a different way. <laughs> totally. totally. So. I feel that. <laughs> so with that, you guys, we'll go ahead and wrap this up for today. Um, 
This is episode 59. So next week when we wrap up the Olympia, we will be on episode 60. So um, we'll have some so have cool. some good vibes and cross our fingers up into the air for the next week. Um, and then that's it. I don't know. Anything else you wanted to add before we finish out? No. Nope. See you massive, guys at the Olympia. Yeah. Massive good luck to you. Um, I'll see you in a couple of days. Um, and then uh, and then we'll, we'll roll from there. So do it. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, you guys. And let's go, Olympia Week. It's Olympia Week. Let's go. Big O, big O, big O. Big heart for the big O. Like that could be. <laughs> that could be our. Wait, this, this is our screenshot. There we go for the. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's our screenshot for the, for the cover. We, we got it. We got it. <laughs> okay. We got the cover photo. <laughs> we got it. Yes. Awesome. All right. Have a great day, you guys. We'll see you back here again next week. And all the love, all that. Behind the bikini, we are out. Bye, guys.